think this dancing character can be found in the entire disc actually. All, all the pieces dance. There is always this uh, swing, this, this rhythmical flowing. So dance rhythms run through the entire disc. For a period of my life, I used to listen to the Bartok Third Concerto a lot, I mean, while traveling actually, for my piano lessons. I had to go from one side of Italy to the other. And I remember listening to this music and I remember one time, the second movement, the beginning with the strings, starting right when the bus turned a curve and the mountains full of snow appeared. And somehow I had the sensation the music was exactly describing the landscape, like overlapping with the mountains. Uh, the Bartok Third Piano Concerto is one of the last works Bartok wrote. And in fact, it's, it's unfinished. The last 17 bars were completed by one of his pupils. And uh, he wrote this uh, meanwhile he was very ill of leukemia and he knew he was dying. So it's a, uh, it's a sad work in a sense, but it's also full of a certain type of joy and, and happiness. And the way I feel about it, the way I see it is really uh, the victory of this type of joy in spite of death, in spite of grief, in spite of sadness. And it, it is a sense, in a sense, it's a testament and something that Bartok leaves to everybody, but specifically to his wife. I always had the impression that the concerto relates to all the beauties of the world and especially of nature. And I, f I, found, I find very touching that Bartok could write this while he was about dying, could have this state of mind, this state of feelings, this, uh, it's like, for me, it's like an outpour of love towards the world, his dear ones, and towards the idea that life will continue also without him, and so will the music. So the chamber concerto is one of the late chamber works, and it uses the, the, the decaphonic technique, but uh, it is also very romantic and expressionistic in character. So behind the music there is a, a specific program and actually Schoenberg describes it. Um, the first part, uh, he says, relates to the fact that life was so easy. Uh, then hatred broke out, a grave situation was created, but life goes on. So actually the concerto is supposed to tell a story, there is a narrative behind it. You can imagine that this program relates somehow to the historical period or to the circumstances of Schoenberg's life, to the fact that he left Europe and Vienna and moved to the United States and maybe the war broke out and so this was like a dramatic moment, an interruption of the previous life. But then in spite of everything else, life goes on, continues, maybe thanks to the music itself, but this is of course speculations, we, we don't know. But it's interesting that the concerto tells a story and carries the listener from one situation to another. And actually, the, the final situation is not so different from the beginning. Of course. I mean, it's like a circle. 
Uh, Schoenberg knew uh, about every note why he is writing, and and um, and what I what I, I what I like it that that uh, he Schoenberg can show in the same time uh, like the all this uh, fair and uh, catastrophe, and but in the same time uh, do it very musically. We chose to complete the disc with the Schoenberg film music and with Kranich symphonic elegy. And uh, both pieces relate to different aspects of the piano concerti, so that there should be a thread that runs through the entire disc. Uh, the Schoenberg film music is one of the expressionistic works uh, by Schoenberg, and as also a program, of course, because it was commissioned for a film that then didn't, didn't happen also for this piece, the film music, there is a program. And the program is a threatening danger, fear and catastrophe. So in a sense, it's, it's similar in some aspects to the one of the piano concerto. Uh, but of course, the expressionistic characteristics are much more enhanced. And we hope that putting these uh, two pieces side by side, we could also shed light uh, onto the uh, expressionistic character of the piano concerto itself. The day after we finished recording the Schoenberg Concerto in Liepaja, I had the great pleasure and honor to perform it in Rundale Palace with the Liepaja Symphony Orchestra and Atwers Lakstigala conducting. And believe it or not, it was most likely the Latvian premiere of the Schoenberg Concerto. Pina is a very deep musician, actually, and uh, actually, and uh, I never expected before uh, that from Schoenberg uh, can come out so a lot of music. Each note for her is very, very, very special. Yes, I really enjoyed working with the Liepaja Symphonic Orchestra, and I really appreciated their dedication to this project, which is a little bit unusual, maybe, uh, for many orchestras, not only for them. But they really behaved like a group of soloists. Each orchestral section was, was like a soloist, and they were never tired or never impatient and we worked really to the extreme possibility to get everything that we wanted in, e in a each little bit of music and I think we managed and uh, I was especially happy when at the end of the project some of the musicians told, the, told me how much they enjoyed playing the chamber concerto uh, in spite of their reservation at the beginning and this is maybe for me the greatest success. For the orchestra, repertoire-wise, I think it's a very enriching experience. And um, as I already mentioned, it's really going out of the comfort zone. And I think that uh, while doing this project and recording sessions, um, we actually raised the level of playing because this music just asked for it. This record, recording, I think, will be very special. That this will be not uh, only uh, perfectly played uh, all the score material, but also a lot of music inside, a lot, uh, lot of passion also, because uh, piano concerto of Schoenberg, this is um, like a story about himself, like a story about his life. And, uh, and the score needs a lot of passion inside. So if I had to summarize one, just one impression that is left after 
playing the pieces or even after listening to the entire disc, for me, is the one of dance. And I have the sensation that this dance, which is a hymn to finding music and finding to life, is able to overcome the other side of the disc, which is nostalgia, the sense of loss, which is not repairable. Thank you.